Welcome back to another video, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Hamilton, and today we're going to go through all of my trades, all of the TA, all of the macro and on-chain for Bitcoin. But before we do that, please, please, please like the video. We're trying to grow the channel. And before we do that as well, we're going to go through the news. Breaking news. In today's segment, we'll be diving into some significant updates that could shape the future of cryptocurrency and the broader financial landscape. Stay tuned as we explore recent comments from Janet Yellen on the US dollar, the push for Ethereum ETFs, and Donald Trump's latest moves in the crypto space. First, let's talk about the US dollar. In a quiet but significant admission, Janet Yellen has expressed serious concerns about the stability of the US dollar. This comes amidst growing global shifts away from the dollar in international trade. In late March of 2023, China and Brazil finalized an agreement to use their respective currencies for trade, bypassing the dollar altogether. By December of the same year, Russia and China announced their intent to abandon the US dollar in their bilateral transactions. These moves signify a broader trend that could have a profound implication on the global financial system. Amidst these shifts, there have been some confusion about Saudi Arabia's stance on the dollar. Recent rumors suggested that Saudi Arabia might stop selling oil in US dollars, but these claims are unfounded. There's no existing petrodollar pact to end, and no paradigm shift in global finance stemming from Saudi Arabia's policies. It's crucial to separate fact from fiction in these discussions, as misinformation can easily distort the true picture. In the realm of cryptocurrencies, significant news comes from the Ethereum market. The United States is inching closer to approving spot Ethereum ETFs. This potential approval could open new avenues for investors and significantly boost Ethereum's market presence. Keep an eye on this space as the regulatory landscape evolves and offers new opportunities for both retail and institutional investors. Finally, let's turn our attention to former President Donald Trump, who had a bit of a crazy weekend, as you guys will probably have heard about. His latest actions are supporting the crypto industry, though. Trump has recently backed J.D. Vance, a crypto-friendly figure, for a key advisory role. Vance is known for his positive stance on digital currencies and could play a significant role in shaping future crypto policies. Additionally, Trump has announced plans to release his fourth non-fungible token, or NFT, signaling his continued interest and involvement in the crypto space. These moves could further legitimize and boost the profile of cryptocurrencies in the political and financial arenas. Yeah, and that's all for today's crypto news. Stay tuned for more updates and insights into the ever-evolving world of digital assets. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay informed. Thanks for watching, and back to you, T.A. Hamilton. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. News Hamilton. Let's jump into some on-chain, then I'll talk about some trading setups that we're looking for over the next 12 to 24 hours, right? So, uh, starting off with the energy value, you can see this red line right now currently sat around 76.6. If we do get above that, you guys know the drill here. We go absolutely parabolic, and the bull run is back on, baby. Let's go. This is it. This is what we're looking for. Say something, right? Uh, but... Uh, as of right now, we are currently pretty far below that. So we'll wait for that for more of a macro. So if you've got uh, probably over 100K, something like this, and you're looking to invest, then uh, yeah, I mean, this is the line you really want to be watching, okay? This is where the, the parabolic time comes in, rather than, say, trading that we'll talk about in a minute, right? If we are looking at the electricity consumption index, um, yeah, this is a very, very simple correlation that is super reliable, okay? So we can see here when this line goes up, and this is just the, the amount of money they're spending on mining right in terms of electricity so uh, when when these lines are at super high levels that's usually when bitcoin tops in fact it's directly correlated with bitcoin tops and as you can see there uh yeah the past few bull runs that has happened and we have seen that come down over the past few months here since april uh where it has just flatlined but we are seeing a little bit of a curve here uh, at the bottom so potentially this turning around soon would be a fantastic sign for bitcoin in terms of bullish momentum uh, in terms of us on the uh the challenge here guys uh, this is actually the wrong 
um, the wrong thing here. There we go. Yeah, the challenge here was sat at 5369 uh, here for uh, the 5k to 100k challenge. It hasn't been exactly as I expected it to go. Uh, lots of uh, false starts, lots of um, just disgusting losses, but we are in profit again, and that's fantastic. Okay, uh, from our win the other day here of $260. So that's fantastic there, right? If we're looking at the ETF inflows, we've got 300 mil. This hasn't actually been updated yet, so we'll be looking for that in the next next video tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe for that, of course. But uh, yeah, the, the short story here is institutions are banging it in right now. They are buying this up. They love the news and they are just slamming in hundreds of millions of dollars into Bitcoin. Fear and greed index uh, has gone up slightly here up to 69. Fantastic number. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, this this typically isn't that bad. Okay. It's, 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 worth worrying about for a pullback potentially, right? And I know I said in the yesterday's video, I said sentiment is bearish. What I meant is my sentiment is bearish when this gets high. A public sentiment is actually bullish when it's like this. Greed, right? They're greedy. They're just going to be buying it in. 100x longs, banging it in, okay? Expecting to get rich overnight. That's not how this works, okay? It's not how this works. You've got to be calculated with this stuff. So uh, yeah, if this does head up into the 70s, I would be worried about a pretty substantial pullback here. And not to mention, we do have that CME gap that we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's not too bad right now in terms of worrying about a huge pullback. I think we could potentially go higher here. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm still kind of neutral uh, as it goes, right? Besides that, yeah, we are just seeing a sea of green across most altcoins here, uh, except Tom, which is uh, interesting, okay? But uh, yeah, everything is just going up. It's fantastic. Alt season is looking prominent to start very, very soon here. So yeah, nice bounces across the board. This is exactly what uh, Bitcoin needed, okay? Uh, and crypto needed. But uh, yeah, besides that, if you do want uh, to join the Patreon, I can't remember if I already talked about this. I've done this in two takes. But uh, yeah, Patreon's here. Free update every single day, okay? You don't have to sign up. You don't have to do anything. Thing. And if you would like to sign up, then it's 10 bucks a month. Uh, very, very simple. And you'll get four signals a day, okay, on the altcoins that I'm looking to trade, okay? Um, liquidation heat map here. Yeah, we were looking for a trade earlier, but um, yeah, just too much support and too many structural lines for us to really find an entry here. It's better to just wait, let this thing float. And then, uh, yeah, if we, if we get rid of a major support, as we'll talk about now, uh, then yeah, I mean, it is something that that we can make massive money on shorting this, right? Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going to be watching this intently on the four hour. As you can see here, we've got this liquidation level, uh, which is a 10x leverage liquidation levels. Uh, and we've had this in for a while since our dump uh, the other day anyway. So uh, yeah, just them targeting this makes sense. 66.2. I'm not going to be looking to get in on this one. But uh, if we do make a high and then uh, kind of pull back a little bit and break that high, then I will be looking for a trade up to 67.8. I know yesterday I was talking about, uh, I'm going to move this over so it's more centered for you guys. There we go. Uh, yeah. So yesterday I was talking about uh, if we broke this, this high here, I believe it was, was it this high? can't actually remember now. <laughs> what we oh yeah, it was this high, right? Uh, if we broke this high here, uh, then uh, we were looking for uh, a pump up to, to smash through and uh, attack the next highs, right? But Or attack the next levels. Uh, and yeah, that did happen, but unfortunately it was overnight for me. I think it was, was it this one? I don't even remember now. I think it was this one. Yeah, it was this one. So we were looking for a long here, but unfortunately this was uh, when I was sleeping. So yeah, you, you can't predict when, when the market's going to do stuff. I'm not going to sacrifice sleep for trading. It's just dumb to do because then you get tired, then you make a decision based on reactions and adrenaline and it's just bad. Okay. You want to be completely rested when you're trading. You want to be calm. You want to be calculated, right? So uh, yeah, we, we didn't, we didn't get that trade, but what we will be doing is looking for the next one. I may get in if we break this high, but uh, uh, again, as I said, I'm more looking for a high to form and then uh, going up. Again, this is the four hour, so we could get this form on like an hourly or something like that uh, coming through from there. Okay, if we're looking on the hourly and we're looking for trade setups, you guys know the drill. If you did see my, uh, my Patreon video earlier, which is free, by the way, um, yeah, we're looking for these two trade setups for shorts towards the downside. So uh, as you guys know, I talk about this a lot, but... I know this is super, super convoluted, so let's just get rid of some stuff. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> yeah, um, volume-weighted ATR bands. This is super important, okay? Volume-weighted ATR bands, these plot the range 
uh, for Bitcoin, right? When we're above them, then uh, it's typically a fact or it's, it's, a, tr it's a trending scenario, right? It's, it's a fact that we're trending uh, when we're above them. And uh, yeah, you can see that pretty clearly. This is how we found our short yesterday, okay, coming down here once we lost them. Uh, again, we didn't, we didn't fully start the trend again here, so uh, we didn't get in this trade, but um, <clears throat> What we're looking for here is to lose the 60 minute as we talked about, right? So if we bring this back, we're looking to lose the 60 minute volume weighted ATR band. Ideally, we can go sideways a little bit here today and let uh, this thing come up and then kind of catch up with this uh, structural line. Okay, if we can break the structural line, and the hourly at the same time, then there will be a beautiful short uh, down, not just to this trend line here, right? But uh, down to the lower 15 minute volume weighted ATR band, as you can see here, right? So just coming down uh, and filling these, these, this kind of gap here, this little air pocket. Uh, and yeah, it would make a higher low still anyway. So it would still potentially be bullish. And then the, uh, the other shorting scenario here is if we actually lose this 15 minute because we do have this CME gap that we talked about yesterday as well, right? CME gaps. CME on the weekend uh, uh, closed, sorry, at um, 57.5. It then opened at 60K. That's a massive 4% CME gap here. So uh, yeah, typically with CME gaps, if you don't know, uh, it means that institutions like to fill them in the following week, right? This happens 80% of the time at least. Okay, so this is what we're looking for here, right? Um, will this dump down into the abyss? I don't know. It's a huge market event, a massive world financial market event. So uh, what we'll be looking for here is signs of that happening. Uh, and one of those signs will be starting a downtrend, losing that lower 15 minute volume weighted ATR band. You can just see an example of that happening here when we did lose it. Okay, massive downtrend there, then we reclaim it, massive uptrend. And this, this is pretty much our, our edge in a nutshell, right? Um, you can see here with this last CME gap here, right, that got filled pretty much instantly. Uh, this one again got filled, um, not instantly, but over the next week. Okay, uh, and you can see lots and lots of examples of this happening uh, throughout Bitcoin's history. So what we're looking for here is exactly that. We're looking for a downtrend to start from from the 15 minute lower volume weighted ATR band in which we can just capitalize on that and make a ridiculous trade. Like the risk reward on this trade is just, it's, it's so good that uh, I was tempted to just blindly short this morning into it, right? <laughs> and just leave it for a week uh, and expect us to be at 60K. But um, yeah, sensible Hamilton decided not to do that because we don't know when this trend ends and we're not going to be here trying to catch the knife from the other side and get stabbed in the hand, right? So uh, yeah, what we're going to do here is wait. We're going to be patient and we are going to chill. Uh, and uh, yeah, those are the downwards trades. Again, upwards trades, we're looking for more uh, a break into this, this next area. So breaking this high, uh, potentially um, a little pullback after that. And then uh, if we break the, the high made after breaking this high, then we will look for another long up to about 67, 68K, that kind of area. Okay, if we're looking at the macro, so the long term, we can see here this ginormous structural pattern. I actually saw a tweet today saying, why did no one draw this over here? And I'm just sat there reading it like, bro, I've, I've drew this as soon as we made this low. Like as soon as we made this low, this was the pattern. <laughs> like this is it, okay? Uh, and yeah, we've just been following that pretty intently. Um, as we talked about in the last video, a lot of people were expecting the black swan here, um, particularly the event that happened. Um, I talked about this a little bit. I don't want to talk about it too much today, but um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of insiders were expecting a black swan as well. So uh, everyone's a bit caught off by the market. We did initiate a downwards measure move, uh, but because of this event, yes, that has been faded right now. Technically, you could make the argument that, uh, that we do have a bigger trap zone here, but it's just a bit too big for me. And uh, what I will say is, um, yeah, we'll just leave it for now. If it does want to make a move to, to the downside and we do get that one event, then uh, yeah, 52.6 down to 48. And those guys that do control the market in the world, then uh, yeah, if they wanted a black swan by doing that thing, then uh, they will still probably want that black swan and they will probably be very short on Bitcoin still. So uh, what we're looking for here is another event. It doesn't have to be a a repetition of the event that happened, but uh, another event of any kind of degree that could trigger that black swan, right? So if that does happen, yes, Bitcoin will tank. So just be aware of that. Um, we could still get that scenario uh, because that is what the big boys at the top wanted, okay? And they usually get what they want one way or another. So yeah, we'll see 
We will see uh, how that goes. Uh, and yeah, towards the upside here, if we do want to smash the all-time high, we talk about this every video, but it's probably the biggest trade we're looking for here, right? An 11% trade. If we break the all-time high, uh, well, we'll call it 10% here because uh, this has actually gone up now. So yeah, great. Well, yeah, 11%. Why not? We break the all-time high, 11%, uh, 74K, all the way up to 82K. Massive, massive trade. Good risk-reward on that as well. Bitcoin will be back in price discovery. Uh, we also have this linear 